Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Um, this is definitely not the video that I would have ever thought I would make coming back to my channel because it's been a long time since I posted and it's it's not the one that I expected to come back with. So many things have happened since I last uploaded and um, those are videos for another day but the reason I'm making this video is because a lot of people, if you might come from my TikTok or my Instagram, um, have asked me what is happening with my daughter. Uh, and I haven't really responded because one, we just found out. Two, we still don't know. Uh, there's a lot of things that are unknown. Three, I want to be very careful of the things that I choose to share and how I share with my kids I, I never want to portray them at their worst I want people to see the amazing kids they are to me I also wanted to upload this to YouTube because I know that I'm going to be asked this over and over again and it's really painful to repeat I don't even know where to start but I guess I'll start at the beginning and what led us to take her to the ER um, September 1st was my husband's birthday and we actually went to medieval times. Um, my best friend took him and I to medieval times to celebrate. And that was later on in the day around 7 PM. Um, while we were there, I received a text from my sister-in-law who was out of town and she told me why, why is the baby walking, um, weird? Um, I guess her walk was off. She was kind of limping, which she hadn't had been doing at all. I'm not sure, but I'll check when I get home. When we got home, my daughter was already asleep. It was like 10 o'clock. So we took her straight to the room and we fell asleep. The next day, September 2nd, um, my kids went to school. So I did my normal routine. I got up, got them ready for school, gave them breakfast, got their lunch ready, um, got my three-year-old, um, and we headed to school for drop-off. I did not notice anything out of the normal with her. Everything was fine. Um, I was trying to pay attention to her walk, but we were kind of in a hurry. When we got back home, um, I usually take her down. I get her iPad and her, she has a pink yeti water bottle i hand them to her and she grabs it with both hands usually and i noticed that she was only using her right hand and i said baby use both your hands because it's it's easier for you it's less heavy and she's like no and i'm like use both hands it'll be it, it that way they're not that heavy she tells me i can't and that stayed in my head and i'm like what do you mean you can't like in my head i was thinking what do you mean you can't so I, I grabbed them from her and we went inside. So as soon as we got in, I grabbed her pink Yeti water bottle and I set it down on the carpet. And I said, baby, can you pick that up? And she went to pick it up with her, right? And I said, no, can you try with your other hand? Because I, I'm like, I'm like thinking, is there something wrong? And I'm like, try your other hand, try your left hand. And she goes to try to put her hand on the handle and she grabs her right hand to grab her left hand to help her left hand lift the bottle and I said can we try it without it just your one hand and she she would just tell me mommy I can't I can't I was trying not to freak out in front of her I was trying not to say anything but I, I did ask her to try a few times my husband came down and I'm like I think we need to take her to the ER because her left side is weak. And then I asked her to walk and I noticed that her knee was kind of bending in. We grabbed as many things as we can and we took her to the ER. Uh, at the ER, they asked what was going on. We explained everything and they got the ER doctor to triage her um, and do a neuro exam. Um, the first thing that the doctor thought was wrong was, oh, it might be a, I think it's called a nurse made arm where if you pull on your kid's arms too hard, it can 
uh, rip the arm. So that's, they thought that that's why she was avoiding using that arm. And I explained to him, but her walk is not the same right now. And we also noticed her smile. She was smiling more towards her right, but her left wasn't really, wasn't really smiling. Her smile was off. So I proceeded to do the neuro exam, you know, asked my daughter to squeeze his, his hands and looked at her, her eyebrow muscles, um, had her walk. She's still walking on her own. And he's like, yeah, something, something's not right. I, I don't like it. So they gave us a room. In the room, we had another doctor come in to evaluate her this doctor also was like mm, it might be her arm you know she looks okay he did a very light neurological physical exam like the first er doctor and his response was well he does she does have some strength in that arm it looks okay to me and i said no but you don't understand is her whole left side of her body it's not just her arm she's avoiding using her walk is off her smile is off. So he ended up doing a more thorough neuro exam. And then that's when he was like, yeah, okay. I see what you're talking about. So at first they said they would order an MRI, but they decided to just do a CT. I went back there with her for the CT and she did really good. She she laid there and I told her we're going in a spaceship. Mom's right here. Mom's going to put her spaceship suit because they put one of those um, um, radiation vests on me. Time passed and I was waiting on the hospital bed with my daughter laying on my legs. And the doctor came and said, um, there is a small mass that shows up on the CT. We can't really tell what it is. So we want to do an MRI. My heart sank. But I was trying to stay positive and like maybe it's something, something else. So they did an MRI. She did have to be sedated for an M the brain and brainstem MRI. Because she's only three. And the MRIs take a lot longer. So we did the MRI and we waited in the recovery room for her to wake up. Um, as soon as the MRI results came in, another doctor walked in and asked us to step aside. She needed to go over the results with us. I heard her ask that she needed us to step aside. I knew something was wrong. I knew, I knew that it was not good news. And that's when she tells us that the MRI confirmed that it was a brain tumor on her right side, putting pressure on parts of her brain that control her left side. And that's why she had the weakness in her arm. That's why her, her face was starting to droop. And because that's why she was struggling to walk. Never in my life did I ever imagine it would happen to us, to one of our kids. This is stuff you see online. And you feel for the parents. And you try to understand that pain. But unless you experience it, you don't know it. And it was happening to us, to our baby. I lost it. I lost it and I cried hard. My husband cried hard. And we hugged each other just thinking. Our baby is not okay. She's such a sweet, sweet baby. I replayed and I continued to replay that in my head, my baby has a brain tumor. I can't 
can fix this for her. I can fix a boob. I can fix a knee scrape. But I can't fix this for her. Because the hospital that we were at did not have a neurosurgeon. We had to be transported to the nearest hospital with a pediatric neurosurgeon that would take her. So we were transported to a hospital about an hour away in an ambulance. This is not her first time in an ambulance. She's had been in an ambulance twice before um, when she had seizures as a baby, as a four and six month old. And when they did an MRI then, this wasn't there and now it was there. And when the neurosurgeon didn't come in, she showed us the MRI imaging. As soon as she pulled up the MRI imaging and I saw the tumor, I saw the size of it. just we just didn't it's big it's, it's, it's large you can see the tumor just invading the right side of her brain and there were no signs of it taking over the neurosurgeon did did inform us that because of the size and because the brain tumor started going into her brain stem, it was inoperable because if they try to remove it, she may not wake up. So they put her on anti-seizure medication because a brain tumor that size can cause seizure and they obviously do not want that to happen they also put her on a steroid to try to take some of the swelling in the brain down to see if it helped with her symptoms her surgeon said that she would do a biopsy so on that Monday she went in for a biopsy of her brain to figure out what type of tumor it is and if there's even a treatment for it. She says because the MRI when she was a few months old didn't show the tumor and now at three and a half it's that size. They think it's a pretty aggressive tumor. And I kept asking like is she gonna be okay and the only response that she was able to get me is like we don't know yet. We don't know what the plan is. We don't know if there's a plan for her. We don't know what the next steps are until pathology comes in. And we have to wait two weeks for pathology to come in. Or after the brain biopsy spent one day in the ICU, the pediatric intensive care unit. Luckily, she did not have to stay intubated. She woke up good. Um, After the biopsy, we were really worried and concerned that our baby wouldn't lift her head up anymore or want to play because she did not want anything to do with, with her toys, with the things she loved. She did not want anything to do with it. After six days, we were discharged and we've been home trying to savor every moment with her we don't know. We do go in on the 21st with the pediatric neuro-oncologist to go over the pathology results. And I'm terrified. We're terrified of what, what they'll tell us. But we are very, very, very hopeful and praying and asking the universe and life to 
to give her daughter life and to have a treatment available for her and that her prognosis is, is good. My two older kids are aware. They're only 11 and 9. Um, I try to explain to them in a way that they can understand and comprehend without putting too much fear in them because I, I, I want them to be positive for their little sister. So we must try our best not to cry in front of her. Now being at home, it's a lot easier. When I'm alone or at night is when I lose it. And I just let all my emotions that I keep keep inside so she doesn't see me cry out. To everybody that's been praying for my daughter and my family that has been lifting them her up in prayer and sending good thoughts and healing vibes, thank you so much. I truly do believe in my heart that in numbers, all those thoughts, prayers, healing energy will help her through this, will help her family through this. So for now, we wait until the 21st to know what what's next for her. And I just ask that you please continue to keep her in your thoughts.